So, uh, we can all see what Lily Tomlin brings to the screen. In fact, I think she might be bringing it right now. Uh, but Paul, I'm wondering if there was something specific about Lily's process on admission uh, that you observed that made you want her to be your leading lady the next time around. Yeah, um, she was utterly dedicated and uh, there was a her character at some point in the scene with Tina Fey, she was played Tina Fey's mom, um, was supposed to be fixing a bike. And when I arrived the, the day before shooting, she was on set learning how to fix a bike and how to strip the chains off and put them back on with her hands <laughs> covered in grease. And, uh, you know, she's really funny and perceptive and at the same time I think has that thing which great actors have, which is there's a direct connection between what they're doing now and some, what I am projecting is some the, the feeling of excitement of when they first got to do it and she's ageless and uh, and really fun to hang out with and Lily you're a creator of material as well as a uh, as well a developer of characters um, so when you're working on someone else's character that they've created are you more deferential in sort of doing your homework and then bring, just bringing that to the set and performing the role or do you tend to want to bring a lot of ideas and bounce them off the director Direct well, I like to do it all. I like yeah. to do it as many ways as I can think of because you want to get as much information, as much input as you can. Uh, I've, I've just done a lot of different things in, in searching for a character. Uh, I've, I, I, in, in the search, the play I did on Broadway in, uh, in the 80s, uh, I played two prostitutes. Uh, and I would, uh, I went down to Hollywood Boulevard and with friends, and we had a limo, and we tried to bring women into the car to talk about being prostitutes. And my my partner Jane, who wrote the play, she said, oh, "I don't have to go down to the boulevard and and interview anybody. I know what what the women say. I know." She said, "I," and she seemed to really know that. But I had to authenticate my performance as best I could. That, that particular exercise is of no help whatsoever. But yes, I like to learn something that I can do in the scene. I like to learn to fix the bike so that I had something really to occupy myself while I'm talking to Tina Fey. Now with uh, the character of Elle here, um, maybe both of you could talk about from the writing perspective, was there, were there people in mind uh, that you know that you in, in any way based the character on? And also from the acting perspective, uh, was it based more on kind of what ifs for yourself, or in any part on people that you know? I I wouldn't presume to to think the character. It was based on a perception I had about Lily and um, how great it would be to light a fuse in a movie uh, and follow it all the way through um, with her being the fuse, um, and that was accurate. <laughs> um, and we did have a lot of time together to go over the script and to. Uh, to kick the tires on everything. Um, there's a line in the place, the character gives a lot of people hell in the movie and um, we kind of went, made sure that there was reasons for everything and there's a part in the movie where her granddaughter says, you have an anger problem? She says, I don't have an anger problem, I have an asshole problem. And when people are assholes to my granddaughter, I get angry. Um, <laughs> it's a, uh, it, it was a, a, just a joyful experience of a, uh, uh, collaboration. And for you? And, and where did you find Elle? Me? Yeah. Um, well, I, I mean, I don't think we really, I don't think of it as a collaboration because, uh, you know, even though we talked about stuff, to me it's not sitting down and writing the script. That's, uh, that's the real challenge. Uh, so, and Paul did that. I, I it was, Somehow it was uh, it was close enough to me that it wasn't an effort. It was um, I don't know. It just fell into place, just like we used my car, my old car, uh, because Paul said he needed a, he was going to go look at an old car, and I said, well, I've got an old car, and I don't, I bought that car back in '75, and I I haven't driven it in years, and we drive it around the block to keep it running, but I thought, well, I, well maybe I kept that car for this movie. Mm -hmm you know, in some strange, circuitous way. And, uh, and then I wore, I wore my own clothing, because it's one day, so it's one outfit. 
and I was just very comfortable. The words were just magical. They just carried me, carried me, carried me. You know, and like the scene with, with um, Sam Elliott, it was just dynamite. Yeah, and the other scene, they'd all, it all seemed to um, flow. Yeah. You, uh, you mentioned Sam Elliott, and you also uh, have scenes with Judy Greer. Yes. Uh, you, uh, it, it might not be immediately apparent to people, but you're really playing, in a sense, a romantic lead here. Uh, and which you've played before, uh, but is it has it been was it for you any different playing a romantic lead now at this point in your life? Uh, you know, decades. Well, on. yeah. I mean, I guess so. I mean, I guess it is. I mean, from people's perception, I know they're mm -hmm. looking at me and they would think, well, she's older, you know, or she's. Uh, I might be conscious of my profile, like, oh darn it. I wish I was 30 and had that really chiseled jaw and neckline, but uh, <laughs> it's okay. I, I mean, I was glad I, I was glad to do it. I didn't think of it as, I didn't think of anything in the past as a romantic lead, and I didn't think of this necessarily as a romantic lead. I just felt, that, felt this was about a human being. Hmm. And uh, Interesting way to put it. I mean, I thought to myself that, you know, that was really important to me that, that Lily's character um, is kind of getting over the loss of a long-term love, but also still has a romantic life. And yeah. she's also got Sam Elliott, who's been carrying a torch for her since they were 21 years old. And uh, uh, she split in the middle of the night, um, ended up going a very different route. Um, but I think one takes it for granted somewhat that... Uh, You know uh, that a man might be in a movie in a relationship with a much younger woman. You know, and I thought that was why. <laughs> yeah. Um, in the film, uh, Elle's granddaughter shows up in crisis, but she also arrives at a moment when Elle is somewhat in crisis—a kind of personal crisis, uh, having just uh, broken up this relationship. Um, can you talk a little bit about, uh, I guess, sort of psychoanalyze her? What? Uh, what, uh, what's on her mind uh, now, and what kind of a mother was she? What kind of romantic partner was she in the past? Well, I imagine she was... Uh, she was probably a pretty good mother. Maybe by her partner was uh, uh, more overtly nurturant or something, or... Um, I think they probably had a good a good relationship, so they were two good components to pass on whatever they could pass on to their daughter. Uh, although she, uh, Elle and her daughter are on the outs because her daughter is a type A personality and uh, she's a, a CEO and a, big, and a lawyer and all that stuff and she's kind of uh, on the edge of being a you know, dominant figure. And she, she, relies on, she relied on Vi, the, the partner of Elle, it's kind of lengthy for me to talk about it. I have to talk in such detail. Um, I think uh, I think she was authentic. I don't know what else to say about her other than that she uh, she might have had an anger problem or she's angry about losing Vi, even though she might have had an anger problem with Vi at the time. Um, I just think I just think she's terribly human, yeah. and she's got flaws and she's got very positive things about her. And sometimes it shifts, and the platelets cross, and and she crosses with Vi, and Vi gives. Oh, she says, "Oh, everybody thought Vi was the the sweet one, or whatever she says, you know." But she knows that she was as sweet as Vi in many respects. <laughs> well, I'm and, almost out of time, but my last question. Oh uh, gosh, I've taken up your time. No, no, <laughs> Paul, you've said that the film is in part about the ability to say "screw you." Uh, and I wonder, uh, for both of you, the most important time you said screw you in your lives, and I, please let it not be now. <laughs> don't, don't let it be now? Oh, yeah. no, I say to myself every day in the mirror. Um, and that's to good and bad effect. I think, um, uh, on a, well, if I was to talk about work, um, you know, my brother and I made American Pie, and, and then we were quickly deluged with a number of scripts, which were teen sex comedies, <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, we pretty much said screw you to doing that, and, um, uh, which worked out nicely. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> and for you, Lily? Well, I used to get scripts that would be, uh, and I didn't even have to say screw you. They would just leap from my hands into the garbage can. And they would be prominent, you know, like big prominent comedies in the early days when I was like just coming off laughing and stuff like that. But if there was anything in the script at all that I disagreed with, I just couldn't do it. I don't mean anything I had to do. Anything any character had to do. I, I just didn't like to do anything, lend myself to anything that, that defamed humanity. You can talk about humanity's frailties and show those, but you can't defame, you can't use it as a joke. Right. Uh, I mean, it's just the wrong thing to do, even in a, a full-out comedy. Yeah. I just don't, I don't like that kind of material, and I don't want to be the one who, who advances it on the culture. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we've all retained our dignity today, our human dignity, so <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Good you luck in the film. so? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks.